Autumn is a busy time in my garden because I have to get the timing just right in Hobart's cool climate, where summers are short and winter comes around fast. Now is the perfect time to get lots of veggies ready for harvest through late autumn and winter and be ready to go when the weather starts to warm up in spring, maximising the time that food is available to be picked. I already have lots of brassicas in my garden, including broccoli, cabbages and kale, but I want to keep them coming all the way from autumn into spring. The key to this is succession planting, where you go from midsummer well into autumn. I've prepared the soil with lots of manure and compost because brassicas are heavy feeders. This will be topped up with a liquid feed, usually diluted seaweed every fortnight, but only until the winter cold sets in. That's because the plants slow down and won't be metabolising the extra nutrients. Then pick it up again in spring when they start growing again. It's important not to plant brassicas in the same spot year after year because not only do they take all the nutrients out, but brassica-loving pests and diseases can build up in the soil. So crop rotation is essential. And now to plant some seedlings. Here I've got some Chinese cabbage. And as you can see, it's pretty root bound, but don't worry, we can solve that. Simply tear them apart gently. This will prune the roots and trigger new growth. The key thing to remember with big brassicas is to space them generously, around 30 to 50 centimetres apart. This allows their big leaves to spread out and it will increase airflow and decrease the chance of disease. Even though these cabbages need a lot of space, while they're young, before their leaves get too big, I can actually squeeze in another quick growing crop of pak choy, a delicious Asian green and they'll be harvested well before the cabbages mature, ensuring there's no competition at all. In our cool climate, it's important not to mulch these crops during winter. Leave the soil exposed to soak up as much sun as possible. Remember to always water your seedlings in immediately after planting. Next, we're gonna plant some peas. I've prepared the soil with lots of manure and compost again. Now peas need something to climb on and I've got some great trellises from my local tip shop here which will do the job nicely. Spacing is important, but I'm planting quite thickly here, knowing that I can transplant healthy young seedlings later to around 15 centimetres apart. I'm going to make the most of the space in between these two trellises by growing some quick growing lettuces. Planting quick growing lettuces ensures I get lots of greens before deep winter sets in. It might seem odd that I'm planting potatoes in autumn because in Tassie, most people usually plant theirs in spring. But in this garden, we get lots of sunshine, have warm microclimates and only very light frosts, which means I get at least two crops every year. I'm growing a potato cultivar called Kennebec. Now, just like tomatoes, you can have determinate or indeterminate types. Indeterminates grow on a vine, and these are the ones that you mound. Determinate types, like Kennebex, only grow on a single layer, so no need for mounding. A good tip to speed up the process is to allow your sea potato to sprout before planting. This is called chitting and gives it a good head start. It's important to source verified sea potatoes as they're guaranteed disease free. My next bed is going to be planted in two stages. Stage one consists of planting some mixed green manure. I've got a range of seeds here, including oat and rye grass, mustard and pea seeds. Green manure crops are great in beds where the soil is a bit tired from previous crops. They can help reduce unwanted weeds taking over keep the soil in good condition and provide habitat for beneficial microbes. They can also help reduce soil compaction from excess rain as well as less drying and can help add nitrogen to the soil. Now for stage two, it's optional, but I like to plant some rows of broad beans amongst the green manure. So the broad beans are feeding me while the green manure will be feeding the soil. Of course, while those broad beans are growing, I'll be cutting down that green manure to keep it low to make sure the broad beans don't get smothered or crowded. And when I've finished harvesting the broad beans at the end of the season, I'm gonna cut all the plants down flush with the soil and integrate them back into the bed. 
finally, this is also a good time of the year to plant some garlic. I'm making three lines. Space them out using your fist as a rough guide. This is Tassie purple, which thrives in our climate. Make sure the flat side goes down and the pointy side goes up and backfill as you go. By getting busy in autumn, you'll be thankful in the months to come as you feast on all types of delicious produce in deep winter and beyond.